Hi, everyone. Welcome to a special Facebook Live. We have Mike Goudet here, all the way from Nicaragua, where he's serving the Lord with his wife, Jacqueline, and his two precious boys. And uh, they have been serving the Lord a long time as missionaries. And we just want to hear from Mike and, you know, just to listen to what it's like to be a missionary, especially as they're serving there in Central America. So, Mike, welcome to the program. Thank you, Pastor Louie. God bless you and everyone on Facebook Live. It's just uh, wonderful that we're connected like this. And, and uh, thank you so much for all that you do on your end. And as pastor and with Go Ministries, we're just serving the Lord here in Nicaragua and teaching sound doctrine and doing what we can to share the love of Christ in this uh Poor, very poor country. Yes, and poor spiritually too. I just know that Nicaragua needs Jesus. And uh, from what I know about Nicaragua, Mike, is it predominantly Catholic? About 40% Catholic, about 40% uh, evangelical, and maybe about uh, 15, 20% uh, non Christian cults. Okay. Uh, it's well reached Christianity. But very few churches have sound doctrine. Many of them fleece the flock for money and legalism. So we're the only church in this area for miles and miles that really shares the full counsel of God's Word and sound doctrine, our Bible teaching, and just loving the people who want to look to Christ as our example. Amen. That's great, Mike. Well, let's go way back. You know, it always goes back to the cross, doesn't it? Back to Jesus. And let's go way back and talk about you as the person way before you were a missionary. Mike, tell us your salvation story. Very good. Um, to be honest with you, Louis, I grew up in a non-Christian family. Uh, we used to go to church, but it was with a non-Christian church called Science of Mind, Metaphysics. And I didn't know any better. My brother Dave and I, we used to go to church. We used to love going to church. But we didn't learn anything about Jesus. It wasn't until 1969, when I was 10 years old, that a dear sweet saint named Mrs. Jensfeld had a good news club for all the children in the neighborhood, including my brother and I. And she used to teach us Bible studies, including about the story of Jesus with her flannel graph. And uh, uh, every day we learned uh, during the summertime when we weren't in school. And uh, at the end, she invited those who wanted to receive Christ. And my brother and I gave our hearts to the Lord at that time. And I, uh, so I was exposed to Christianity uh, because of that dear saint leading us to the Lord. But I fell away from the Lord when I, after high school where I got involved in metaphysics, there was a church in Anaheim called Cyanetics. You might have heard of it, which uh, had psychics, and I used to go there with my dad. Although my mom rededicated the life of Christ, it was a dear Christian again. I fell away, uh, although my brother Dave did it. But uh, uh, in 19, I'm sorry, 1982, I was with the help of my mother's prayers, and my brother uh, praying for me. I rededicated to my life to Christ, and I've been with the Lord ever since. Praise awesome. The Lord. Praise the Lord. That is so great, Mike. And what was life like uh, subsequent to that? How did your life change? That's a very good question. Um, in 1982, the Lord just totally redirected my life after I gave, rededicated my life to the Lord. I, before that time, I was involved with marijuana and getting mm. drunk and going to parties and going to psychics uh, and things of that nature, and, and really, I was so lost. But in 1982, I started going to church with my brother Dave, uh, including Calvary Chapel. We go to different home fellowships, and uh, the Lord started to redirect my life. I was in a dead-end job. I hadn't gone to college, even though I graduated from from high school in 1978, 
but God directed me to to uh, to, to say good, adios, goodbye to my old job, and I went to work at Coast College, and I studied electronic technology, and then and uh, for two years, and uh, after two years, I started to get involved with, with going on short-term missionary trips to Mexico. Oh. Uh, and uh, uh, from those short-term trips, I, I used to go to Calvary Chapel Alamos, who was the first uh, missionary uh, uh, location, first missionary church that Calvary Chapel had through, through Pastor uh, uh, Frank and Betty Robles. And they uh, really uh, spoke to me and said that we really like you to work with us. So I started taking Spanish. I didn't know how to speak any Spanish in 1984 when I first went there. But I, I took some Spanish classes at Orange Coast College, and I went back in 1985. And then I started serving there for a while. And then God uh, kept directing me. I, I uh, felt led of the Lord to go to Calvary Chapel Bible School, which was a college in Twin Peaks in 1987, 88. And I got grounded in the Word. And I also went to uh, Calvary Chapel's Language School. I'm sorry, 85, 86, I was at Calvary Chapel Bible College, and then 87, 88, I went to Calvary Chapel Language School in Mexico, okay. where I learned the Spanish language and became bilingual, and I lived with Mexican families that didn't speak any English, full immersion into the Mexican Spanish culture, Wow! and now I'm still doing this, uh, in, but in a different country, as God blessed me with a wife in uh, 2007. My wife's Nicaragua, and we live right with the people. It's not beans and tortillas. I mean, it's not hamburgers and fries. It's more like beans and tortillas here, but they're good, too. And uh, we're just serving the Lord after all these years in the mission field. But I started off in 1984 just going on short-term missionary trips, and God touched my heart to be a missionary. I needed to do what God put in my heart. I'm still, by grace, serving him. I don't have the international iron cast stomach, but God is, by His grace, all these years, uh, uh, given me His grace so that I could stay here and serve Him. And uh, it's just been a blessing all these years, Pastor Louie. Wow. Praise the Lord, Brother Mike. Um, what kind of dictated your more long-term mission down there after your short-term mission trips? What kind of what did the Lord use to show you to go down there full time? And where did you go and who did you serve with? Well, it's a, a kind of a progression in time. Uh, in Mexico, after serving the Lord in the 1980s, uh, the last trip was in 1988, I uh, had uh, problems with uh, liver uh, uh, abscess with amoebas. I could have died from it. Ooh. I went for, to several doctors. <laughs> And uh, I, then I started to work uh, because in those years I, I used to support myself. I wasn't a full-time missionary yet. But uh, in the early 90s, I got very sick. And after going to many doctors, I finally found one, Dr. Robert Marshall in Torrance, California, that uh, found out what I had, that he had special tests done. And he says, we need to, to cure you of uh, amoebas, otherwise you're going to die. I was on my way to dying. I had to quit my two jobs I had, and slowly I, I, I got well again. In 1993, I was totally healed. Wow, and then in 1994, Lord. I went back to work again. But during those years, the Lord used me to help missionaries before there was internet, before there was cell phones, with ham radio. Oh. I started a ham radio fellowship at Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. We trained missionaries, and we provided with them communication so they could communicate with their friend, family and their pastors uh, during that time. In 1995, I went back to the missionary field, even though uh, my doctor told me not to. I just felt so much in my heart uh, a desire to serve him. I went back on the field again. God instructed me on medicines to take, and I got sick again, but I got well, and I stayed well. And I, I went to Dan Jones' uh, location in Mexico near Alamos at Rancho Maranatha, and Dan uh, really encouraged me. It was a blessing. 
And uh, I used to communicate with him by ham radio. And uh, and then I went in, again in 1996 there at Dan Branch, helping him. And the year 2000, we went back. My father and I built him the first broadcast radio station. We stalled it. Got it running for him, so we had a radio ministry. Uh, I went to Nicaragua, turning back time. Uh, my first trip to Nicaragua was in a children's orphanage in 1997. And I helped a missionary named Joseph Hewn. Uh, at that time, the internet was new. They didn't have any communications at all. They were in a uh, rural area near a town called Nueva Guinea. And I installed for him a, a ham radio with uh, wireless email. He went from no communication to uh, daily, real-time communication, both with uh, phone patches through the telephone, uh, through the ham radio, and wireless email. And his support went way up, and people started donating to his ministry uh, with his wife, their orphanage. They got much more money for the children. They were eat better. They were clothed better. They got them in a Christian school. Uh, I went in 1998 to uh, uh, to uh, Calvary Chapel, all through Calvary Chapel missionaries, uh, through radio, God directed me to different locations. I, I went to uh, missionary Sydney Barnes, um, a location in Ghana, Africa, did the same thing, set him up with ham radio, we trained him, we got him licensed, we got him equipment, I taught him everything, and he was very technically minded as was... Uh, uh, Joseph here in Nicaragua picked it up like a wet sponge, got a wireless email. Mm. I was there three months, uh, filled, with, filled in for him when he got malaria, teaching his Bible studies. Wonderful African brothers, uh, the Afante tribe, uh, and uh, it was just wonderful to serve the Lord there. Uh, in uh, 2001, I, in 2000, 2001, I went back to the orphanage helping Joseph Hume, then I met uh, Leon Scott, who was the Calvary Chapel pastor, planning a church there in Nueva Guinea, helped him in ham radio, wireless email, and uh, and then uh, in 2007, skipping time, I, I, all these years I would work and I'd go back and forth to the mission field. I, I worked a, a, in a, a job that allowed me to have leave of absence at Christian's High up in the in the company, they would give me a these leave of absence, and my job would be waiting for me. It was wonderful. Uh, but in the year two thousand and one, uh, Pastor Louis, I took the plunge. Pastor uh, and uh, uh, Phil Quente gave me guidance. I was saving my money for years in the bank, knowing that I was going to leave my job, and I became a full time missionary supported by Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, but my support was real low, but uh, God uh, took care of me uh, even still, and uh, I worked temporarily my same job one more time in 2002, saved my money, and then after that, the Lord provided with those precious saints that still are supporting us uh, here on the mission field. Uh, some are called as senders, others are goers. I went to Albania in 2007. I mm. went to South Sudan and Uganda. All those places with broadcast uh, radio stations where I, I set up their uh, transmitters, their antennas. And uh, and then finally in 2007, uh, I married Jacqueline, who's Nicaraguan. And now I'm no longer going anyplace else. I'm, I'm here in Los Cocos, Nicaragua. And uh, we built our home and started a home Bible study in 2008, which uh, 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 grew in numbers. And then I became ordained by Chuck Smith. And uh, we planted the, the Calvary Chapel Church here in our community, which we still have and still are serving all these years. And uh, wonderful Nicaragua national believers, all from poor families that we minister to and uh, we give food and clothing to. Uh, uh, so I'm no longer a traveling missionary now with my wife and uh, and those. Uh, we work as a team. I, mean, I can't do this by myself, Louie, uh, but uh, I'm a leader and uh, overseer, and we all work together in Christ, uh, serving the Lord and, and 
reaching the people for the love of Jesus in an area where there are no sound doctrine churches. All of them have false doctrine. Wow. And some of them fleece the flock for money, legalism, and if, if it's not the, the uh, idolatry that they have and witchcraft and, and mm. uh, also the Jehovah Witnesses are here. So we're needed here. Just a, a salt and light, uh, Louis. Uh, I know you came to visit us in 2013. It was a blessing. We enjoyed your visit. Everybody remembers you uh, here. <laughs> you and Sister Cheryl. We had a great time, Mike, coming down to see you. And we also, um, I think we met, didn't we, at Rancho Maranatha uh, with Dan and Anna <laughs> Jones and the beautiful Jones family. So uh, I could see how God put us together then. And you had become later on a go missionary. But we just kind of enjoyed following you around and um, seeing what the Lord had for you and praying for you and and just supporting you and your family as as we could. And uh, so we are grateful to be able to do that and to see you, yes, down in uh, Nicaragua, picking us up at the airport, serving also with... Um, yeah. Uh, other go missionaries, Dave Budgen and your father-in-law yes. Arsenio and uh, Maritza, and uh -huh. give a shout out to them. And it's a beautiful place down there. Beautiful flock. Pastor Mike has just done a great job, along with his uh, wife Jacqueline, in uh, nurturing this uh, flock, these little lambs. And uh, they do so much. You know, we get their their frequent newsletters and uh, learning that. All the monies that come in that go to them as a family, you know, they also put aside for the poor and the needy and for projects. They had to, uh, right. there's a lot, there's a lot behind being a missionary. You know, you've got to, like he yes. built, he built his own home. He had to put up his water tower with a filter to get good water um, and so yes. forth. Uh, Mike's digestional uh, challenges have kind of followed him, but. He's always, you know, overcome, you know, in the Lord. And it's just like reading a missionary biography. But this is live. This is through someone I know. And it just represents so many of our Go missionaries that are serving all over the world. And we're just so blessed and proud of each and every one of them. And just so happy that uh, Michael and Jacqueline can, can continue by God's grace through all that they've, they've gone through. So, uh, Mike, with that, how can we pray for you presently? You have uh, outreaches, you serve the poor and the needy, you, you take care, you feed the children and, and so forth, and you teach the word. I watch you online, and um, you're doing a great job with all of that. Uh, but how can we pray for you now? What are some of the present-day challenges? Thank you, Pastor Louie, and uh, thank you for your heart to care for us all these years. Uh, yes, there are several areas to pray. Um, as you know, uh, worldwide, there's the COVID-19 virus, and uh, it's really uh, uh, gone around uh, Nicaragua like wildfire. Many uh, people have died, even neighbors and people in our community. We've had to uh, uh, stop our, our church services the last two months. So we have, we have a low-power radio broadcast. We go out daily with live and also recorded uh, Bible studies that Arsenio, Missionary Day Budgeon, and that I teach. And we also have Pastor Chuck Smith translated into Spanish and other Calvary and non-Calvary Bible teachers. Uh, we gave out uh, portable radios, AM, FM radios, to every family in our church. Wow. So they can stay in the Word even though we... They cannot uh, fellowship nice. in our uh, church facility. We miss them dearly. They miss us. Uh, but we continue to minister to them. We're praying for when we can open the doors again. Uh, we're praying that uh, there will be a day, as God wills in his time, that we can open our doors and minister personally to their needs, both physically and spiritually. Mm -hmm. But we continue uh, to minister over our low-power broadcast station. We're working on getting... Uh, and it's a prayer request to get a full-fledged frequency with high-power license. We recently became friends uh, with a uh, the mayor uh, who is with the government, uh, who is a Christian brother. We're All going right. to see him again tonight. He's working on our application. 
application, we have to resubmit our application with uh, his signature on it, and he can hand deliver it, meet with diputados that are senators in the government. He knows connections, what we call palanca, uh, uh, power connections. And we're going to offer him uh, a, pro a program where he's going to be educating uh, the people in social programs. We tell them we're involved in what they call social programs, giving out uh, food provisions. Even still, every month we still give out food provisions to every family in our church. Nice. Uh, we give out clothes, give out medicine. Uh, we're helping one of our uh, dear uh, brothers, Al Al Alonso, and his wife, Sarita. They're living in a, a plastic shack. Mm. Uh, they've started building their house. We're, we're getting them a roof. The Lord provided with a, uh, an anonymous donation. I don't tell anybody who they come from, but the Lord provides, and we're getting him a roof. Uh, next month in August, uh, we're going to be buying the materials, and uh, the Lord is using in different ways. Mm. Uh, we're like uh, Brent, you know. I think you can relate. You're like a bridge to us missionaries, Pastor Louie and Go Ministries and the Go staff. Uh, you guys are very helpful to us to enable us to do what we do here on the field. And uh, we want to, uh, again, we want to serve the Lord and use him as an example to uh, have a full ministry here where we help the people and we minister to them the Word of God with sound doctrine and, and health ministries and was teaching of the word. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, brother. Uh, just such a great interview, isn't it? You know, everybody just watching right now and listening to Mike Goudet uh, just talk about his missionary experiences, both past and present now, in Nicaragua. And uh, boy, Mike, you know, if someone wanted to get behind you, um, you know, you've talked about your prayer needs. How can we uh, contact you? And and after the program is over, I'll I'll type onto the Facebook, you know, your uh, email address and your um, you know, all your information so they can contact you. But but say it out. What is your church called? Our church is called Capilla del Calvario Emmanuel, which translates Calvary Chapel Emmanuel. Okay. God with us. Amen. All right. And, uh, Amen. Amen. I love it, Mike. You know, just when we think about how it all works, kind of like I have you on my, my tripod right now. I have the iPhone on the tripod. It has three legs, and we like to see that this ministry is uh, three-legged as well. And uh, that's the missionary out there and the supporters that are supporting the missionary. But Go Ministries is that liaison between, you know, channeling the funds and all and supporting the missionaries as well. So that's how it works. So your email is w uh k six zero at yahoo. No. no. Say it no, again. It's not a zero. Letter O. That's okay. Oh. The email's tricky. I'm about that. Letter O. W K six O. Like WK six O oh, yes. at yahoo.com in case someone is writing that down right now. But I'll be posting all of this uh, information. I encourage you to get on Mike and Jacqueline's uh, newsletter. Uh, they work on it together. Jacqueline's just a, a blessing and just really right in there with, with Mike and raising two beautiful boys, uh, William and Samuel. And they're just such a joy. We see them every now and then when they come to the States. But 
Not much because they're down in Nicaragua serving the Lord full time and doing so much. So why don't we pray for them right now? Join me in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this Goudet family. We pray blessings upon them, Lord. We thank you so much for all that you have done in the past with the calling upon Mike's life. Lord, we just thank you for leading him to Mexico and learning the language and and then working hard and saving money and all that you showed him along the way with learning technology and going to classes and all and schools so that he could use all these things on the mission field, preparing himself well. And then, Lord, you saw in point of time that he needed a helpmate, a helpmate from the Lord. And you sent Jacqueline to him, Lord, and two beautiful boys that are just growing like weeds. Father, we just pray blessings upon them, health and uh, sustain uh, income for them to meet all the needs, not just for their own family, but Lord, just like any godly, you know, sent by the Lord missionaries, just uh, conserving their own finances so they can give uh, beyond all that to the poor and to the needy and feeding those children and giving a roof to that poor family and and on and on and on. Lord, we just pray that you would guide them and sustain them, you know, physically, financially. We pray for their marriage. We pray for, for quality family time for them. Pray you'd help them through the heat and the humidity. And uh, Lord, that you just keep them from injury and disease. And Lord, just pray that your anointing would be upon all the flock, that they would get back together after quarantine. And thank you that you prepared Mike so well with uh, being so technical. A lot of us pastors have had to catch up to Mike uh, for this quarantine. But Lord, you have gone before and just used him so beautifully. And uh, he just knows how to do all that stuff, Lord. And it's really paying off that people can listen to the word of God remotely and all. And through these devices and through the radio waves, Lord, we just thank you for that. Pray the church would be strong in your word. We pray against the false doctrine uh, that's uh, among the other ministries and churches that are down there. Thank you that Mike is just centered upon Christ and the word of God and just sharing the gospel and teaching, you know, the word of God to the people so they can be healthy sheep, Lord. And we just want to support that right now in prayer. So, Lord, we just thank you for this time and we just love you so much and pray blessings now upon Mike and Jacqueline Gooday in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen, brother thank Mike. You for praying, yes, thank you, brother. Um, thank you for everything. Thank you for the time, and I'm glad this worked out with the internet on your end and even on my end. Uh, God held it strong, so praise the Lord. And so we're we're gonna sign off and just pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Cristo te bendiga. Adiós.